Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in Old World Blues, Monster of the East, also known as Old World Blues 3.0, at the start of a new campaign, in which we are playing as someone somewhat familiar, the Legion. Now, the Legion for Old World Blues has had an update, so we have a new focus tree, or at least a refreshed one, to see what it's like. Uh, as per normal rules or customs or tradition on this channel, we have custom game rules, and major nation buffs, no new buffs, everything's going to be random. Actually, we're going to leave it on historical. You know what, let's leave it on historical, because this is my first campaign in Old World Blues 3.0, because I don't know what's going to happen. I've not played a campaign yet before I, I'm recording this. I'm going in kind of noobish, noob, newbie-like. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Uh, I generally try to avoid dev diaries, but a couple mods that I'm using for this campaign, of course, includes Old World Blues. Colored events. Stage Chester Tool Mod and Player of the Peace Conferences only for mod, but Expedition to Blackfoot. The Expedition to the Blackfoot Tribe was the defining event of Legion history. The tribe was the foundation of Kaizo's Great Legion. And it was through the flames of this primitive's tribe wars that the iron will of Kaizo was forged. Now, I've played as Kaizo before, but that was quite a long time ago. And like I said, this focus tree is actually quite, quite big, quite different, actually. We actually start with a couple puppets here. We got quite a few things to do. Actually, we've got a lot of things to do. We got the Rubicon, and something interesting about this new reworked Legion is that your generals require some amount of glory to proceed through focuses. For example, do not ask what the fox says. Vulpus must have some glory, so if you want to do that focus. Uh, the Legate, the Malpius Legate, must have some glory to proceed, so we've got to figure out who we want to have glory, which will come through different focuses and maybe even events, I think. Ooh, Slave Collars. Ooh, you know what? They're Enforcers, basically, but that has me excited. And with this new technology stuff, I see... Ooh, look at this. Fallout Tech Tribal Folder. It looks like they've spread these out. I like the color coding. That's really, really nice. Ooh, and even we have tech level folders here, too. Uh, I, I don't mind it like this. I just wish they were a little closer together. Color coding is great, but putting them, up, putting them away from each other... Uh, it's, it's okay. It's not bad. It's not great. Shell Batch Mini... Yes. Horses. Ooh. Gehenna Molik Equipment Command Module. Ooh, what's over here? Mercenary Advisors, anything down here. Legion buffs, which seems like we could probably get quite a few Legion buffs if we really wanted to. And I'll let you know, I have no specific direction yet at the time of this recording. So whatever happens, happens. So let's go ahead. Obviously, we got to do some Land Doctrine stuff. We're going down Asymmetric Warfare. But like any good campaign, we're doing this. Let's grab some Combat Language. And Industry. Oh my goodness, we have like no Industry. Let's see, we probably want to build some Civilian Factories if possible. 50 in Flagstaff, which looks pretty good. 20, 20. Oh my goodness, the roads are so bad around here. Oh, Legion. Ooh, 40. Okay, we'll do 40 right there. Down here, we have a puppet, and we'll show you everything around that. Oh, actually, do that first. North Phoenix would be good. And South Phoenix, yes, yes, yes. Cool, that solves that problem. We have basic melee weaponry, pipe guns. We're going to believe in those. Tribal scout kits are going to be incredibly important. Dynamite, support equipment, and that's all we have. So, get a plenty of that. Go for two, because that's probably all we're going to need. Go for two as well. Go for four and fill out the rest with that. There we go. Perfect. Dockyards. Oh, crud. Cutter holes. I never remember. Like, you, if you follow this channel, you know I never remember what we specifically use for ships. So, cutter holes are okay. You know what? Let's use cutter holes. Just go for cutter holes. We're going to get a lot of naval XP. Goodbye for now. Cool. We're only going to make one else. We already have a ship. Boom. 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 Navy, real quick. Oh, we actually do have a couple ships. Uh, there you go. No capital ships, which is kind of disappointing, but that's fine. I'm not really going to plan on my, be using my navy at all too much. Ooh, Marion. Just train. Doesn't matter. You know what? Screw it. I'm not making that. There you go. Convoys are good. Legion soldiers. Tribal militia. Looking pretty militia-like. We have the Legionary. Not bad. 16 combo with, with some... Hey, chem companies. Those are pretty good. Frumentari. We got Recon, of course, that's not bad. And then we have the Prime Legionaries. Not bad, not bad. We'll probably just train a lot of these, though. Get six, because everything has a cost. And we'll train one at a time. Just one. Now, let's slowly let time go on. Do we, I doubt we have an Air Force. Yeah, we don't have an Air Force, which is fine. Go back to the Army. Cool. And the Great Council wants an aggression pact. Sure, why not? We have only 34 divisions. And we have one Special Forces division. Oh, man. Mm, I just like using like everyone like that. There you go. Boom. 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 
good. Four armor is, is good enough for now. Lucius. Oh yeah, not bad. He's level four, pretty good. Obviously, we're going to need quite a few more generals. Aurelius, I'm just going to put you on the special forces for now, just because we can. Give me upgrades. Let's let, let's let time go on, though. Level four, three, two, two, three. Cool. And oh, look at this. Trade route established for two sons, and it results in more money for us. Castra Sola of Rubrum for 5.77, and we're going to get a little event here, which we'll talk about caps and stuff, money. Denaris, Denari stuff. What is this? Puppet? Oh yeah, our puppet ledger. We have the Navajo as a puppet, as well as two sons. So we don't have to conquer two sons because we already have them as a puppet, which is kind of nice. But let's come back over here and trade node, which I have experienced a little bit already. Flagstaff, trade connections. Ooh, we can make a uh, current value of two sons is 19. And which we'll talk about this in a bit. Do that, that's fine. Trade node. We have two dots set it up. So, caps and a 3.0. 3.0 update. Cool. The 3.0 update. Monster of the East again breathes a new life into the CAP system. CAPs have moved from a steady trickle all game to a representation of large areas of commerce, trade, and occasional conflict. Track the move of CAPs across the map. Purchase equipment from brokers throughout the waste and uplift the local economy. This set of events will bring you through a basic tutorial of the system. This tutorial is highly recommended for a first playthrough in version 3.0, along with enabling help tools or tool tips at the end of this tutorial or in the Pip Boy under the mechanics to caps. Uh, just because this is the first campaign I'm doing in Old World Blues, I will be going through this tutorial with everyone. So if you don't want to read about this, just skip ahead in like three minutes ahead or something. Three or four minutes. So, the hustle. Income is a sum of two numbers. For minor countries, a majority of the caps come from a flat income. Flat income is granted through economy laws, focus rewards, and decisions. You can currently make 15 caps from flat income. The second source of income is through economic nodes covered later in the tutorial. Every 92 days, or a little over three months, expenses are subtracted from income, and the coffers fill or empty. When net caps are negative and the bank is empty, your country may suffer great instabilities. Oh boy. Continue. The bank and the bill. The cap system can be viewed at the glance at the, at the top bar, which will show your current copper of caps. When hovered, it'll give you more detailed breakdown of your incomes and expenses, plus the modifiers applied to both. Oh, oh, look at that. I like this other currency we have. Slaves. I love slaves. The primary expense in the cap system is military upkeep. Troops cost money, and the more you have, the more each consecutive battalion costs. The recruit and deploy menu shows an estimate cost of the troops in your training queue. Some special, special units, such as spec ops and power armor, cost more battalion per battalion than infantry. Current troop costs cost a little over 11,000 denarius. Denarius. In terms of strife, peace, or capitalistic inspiration, some coaches can adjust their army wages, increasing or decreasing their army costs and strengths. Army wages can be set as an economic law, and these laws have a 140 day time out between swaps, which is right here. So, standard wages basically, you can mothball division, so you can basically not pay them anything, but you're going to get a lot of debuffs. Lifetime pensions, which is the other extreme, it costs quite a bit more, but you get more army experience gain, a lot more organization and recovery rate, which is not bad. To the new stuff America Universalis. Man, can you imagine like that? America Universalis compared to Europa Universalis? Economic nodes are the cornerstone of the 3.0 update, update to caps. The state node view can be seen by selecting the state that is part of a node. You currently control two. Nodes are a collection of member states and a central state. Each node has a level between 1 and 10. Let me open up this one here. Flagstaff, no. Levels 1 through 8 can be achieved through improving a node's development, while level 9 and 10 require economic development normally rewarded through decisions and focuses. Every factory, dockyard, infra and infrastructure in a node adds to its development. Generally, the more member states in a node, the harder to improve it, it is, but the higher level it can reach. Nodes grant the largest percentage of a country's income when controlled. Your node income is 36. Each node's income is comprised of two parts, development income and trade income. Development income is directly dependent on the node level. The trade income is generated through trade routes. Each source of income has a respective modifier at both a state and country level. During conflict, no Nodes can become disabled. Disabled nodes do not provide income. So, here it is. So, currently we have level 1. Oh, oh that does not sound very good. Trade route. Oh, uh, cool. No current trade partners. That sucks. Member states. Continue. Caravans, not minivans. As a country with nodes, leveraging your new economic power is a must. Each trade node can be the source of one trade route to another node. Trade routes uh, follow predefined links across the wasteland through areas with favorable terrain and avoiding dangers. Links can also be created from focuses, decisions, and events. A route can be started through the state node view, but have a few requirements. No current route from the source node. Under the country trade road cap. Or, yeah, cap. 40 political power and a road or route along the same link was not recently changed. One cent. A trade route sends a portion of the node's development income to receiving to the receiving node, with a bonus for each income route. A smaller portion of the receiving node's development value is sent backwards to the source node. One cent trade routes last indefinitely, but cannot be changed for a minimum of four months. Trade routes also 
are disrupted by conflict. Countries can maintain a maximum number of outgoing trade nodes or routes, roughly two times their nodes. So, for every node, you can roughly have two. Cool. Not quite Nicolas Cage, you better track the flow of caps around the waist. Each bottle cap has a small map inscribed on the back. We aren't sure where these came from, but you can access it through this top bar where I'm clicking right now. Trade or trade node map. There's a lot of reading in this uh, tutorial, which is very important. The trade node map displays a lot of information. Let's break it down. On the far left is a trade ledger. This contains a sum of development income, trade income, and total income from all controlled nodes. Directly underneath it is a list of currently owned nodes. The last button in this panel shows all current routes to and from controlled nodes. So controlled nodes, cool, and currently make money from routes. We currently get money from economic nodes and money from state development near nodes. The center contains a draggable map of all trade nodes. Left clicking to select will highlight trade links in green and trade routes in orange. These colors match throughout the GUI. That's us. Oh, and there's some orange ones. Cool. Two suns. Flagstaff. Uh, on the far right is currently the currently selected node of Flagstaff. So, this displays a node's income at a glance by selecting a linked node through this panel. An overview of the linked node is displayed along with any alternate ways to send trade routes. So, Flagstaff. Uh, capital. New Vegas. Send trade route. We need more political power to send trade route, trade route over there. Cool. And honest business. There's a variety of organizations all across the way that facilitate the transfer of goods. These organizations now set up shop and trade node. When a trade route is sent from a node with an organization established, that organization may decide to make the jump to expand their operations. The market has received a total overhaul. It can now be accessed via the top bar miscellaneous menu. A country's tech level no longer determines the available goods and transactions are now instant. When interacting with organizations, their opinion of a country rises. High opinion gives both better buy and sell prices, organization marketplaces, which we ha currently have none. Opinion can be leveraged for a few favors from an organization. Most contracts and orders require minimum opinion to use, and so also require some spendable option or opinion. Spendable opinion is accrued by interacting with an organization directly, while general opinion can be increased by favorable actions, such as giving a government position to organization leaders. Different groups have different specialities. It may be wise to entice them all to set up a front in your nation. Continue. And helping hands. This tutorial is a brief overview of the mechanics for caps, in an effort to keep the system as readable as possible in game. Help tooltips are available for all major caps windows. This can be disabled or re enabled at any time. Just go and enable them, that's fine. Alright, let's actually play the game. The Torch of Civilization in 2247, Milroman missionary Joshua Graham, as well as two followers of the Apocalypse, Calhoun and Edward Solo, were captured by the Blackfoot tribe bystanders to a typical tribal war. But Solo's suggestions to the tribe turned to orders which turned to leading a battle, which turned into dominion over the tribe, naming himself Kaizov. He trained the Blackfoot in the ways of the Old War, and helped them conquer the next six rival tribes. He showed them how to clean and maintain guns, operate with small unit tactics, creating their own explosives, and to strike at their weakest enemies first. Divide at Impera. Divide and conquer. By the time the war was done, he was no longer a follower of the Apocalypse. He was a Kaizov, a new empire. His greatest introduction was weapons maintenance, which we get more reliability. There are too many achievements to list, which... Worsens Kaisar's health. Ooh, that looks really good, but I don't want to hurt Kaisar, because if you look over here, because, like, this is a completely redone Kaisar's Legion, basically. War for Hoover Dam, of course. We can subsidize our puppets, subsidize our puppets, basically. Lift taxes, organization relations, which looks kind of cool. I don't know where Butcher Pete is, but that's kind of cool. Entice a chop shop expansion. And where there's a whip, there's a way. Gotta be careful using a slave as a bodyguard. Most aren't exactly motivated by to keep you alive. Do you know what I mean? Your current slave level is three. In which we can use slaves to do stuff. We can launch a raid using slaves. Oh, man. All generals available for border war began planning a border war. We have political actions like normal, procurement of things, ruthless drills for drastic measures, which we don't want to see. Development projects would look pretty good. Oh, the outcomes of these decisions are influenced by research technologies. So we'll probably save that for quite, quite a bit later. The Ami Sea of the, of the Legion. Kaiser does not conquer every people he defeats. Some settlers are given autonomy as long as their towns pay taxes to the Legion. Others, like the Reservation, trade with the Legion for slaves. There's a reason why many prefer to live under the bull than on their own, which we can inter interact with our puppets, which is great. Manage our subjects, like normal. For the glory of Rome, the fate of Kaiser. The more the great Kaiser exerts himself, the greater risk of death. Perhaps he should not exert himself quite so much, for now Kaiser is healthy. Unit tactics, organization, reliability. I'm just going to go with unit tactics, because that seems pretty good. Uh, let's see. The next one is... The Janus face of Kaizam. Kaizam's mercy after a battle was as renowned as a brutality during the, during it. For every slave broken to the Kaizam's lash, there was a farmer who thanked the Legion for killing a raider. For every tribe who lost their name, there was a town that blossomed under the Arizona sun. Good. So I don't want to kill off the Legion at, or the Kaizam at all, but ooh, at two more brute, something's been off with the great Kaizam of late. He has not mentioned it, but some of his aides have seen him hold his head as if in pain, forget certain key details, and some have seen 
as if he no longer has special as he once was. Although the Legion frowns upon medicine, perhaps an exemption could be made for Kaiser, but where would we even find the ability to heal such a sickness? It's probably nothing, right? The mighty Kaiser will suffer from stress the more he exerts himself. However, a center technology and learning may contain a way to cure him, but where will we find such a tool? Note that stress is not visible to you, so remember, sic transit gloria mundi. So, all we can see is, he's healthy for now. Unrest amongst the slaves. While our slaves have never been terribly happy with the working conditions and social standing, over recent weeks it seems that our slavers have become particularly rebellious to our orders. Sparked by an influential slave leader in Flagstaff, sporadic clusters of violence against slave owners have spread across our nation in the past few days, with slaves defying orders and even attempting mass breakouts. While our core demands are little more than con better conditions and foods, we risk setting a dangerous precedent. Should we bend to the slaves? Crushing them, on the other hand, could surely break the spirit of the slaves for decades to come, but... Could be costly in men in its stability. What do we do? Minor concessions. We lose stability. Kaiser will crush revolt personally. He gets cruel tyrant. Uh, so you get more stability. We will crush a slave unrest, making sure they never rise up against us. Crush the revolt. Cruel tyrant. Oh man, that seems like a lot of fun. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, this is available because he is a cruel tyrant. So he is a cruel tyrant. He's a warmonger and conqueror of tribes. Crush the revolt. Uh, we're going to personally crush them. Oh, I, I like that. And here are national spirits. The cult of Mars. We lose some recruitable population. Get some war support. Civilian to Mac fact, military factory conversion cost goes up quite a bit. And military construction speed plus 10%. The 86 tribes and the civilized societies. Cello and Graham were ruthless in, in war, but they managed to forge a society east of the Colorado. Tribal subjects became a tabula rasa. Their culture incorporated into a legion that assimilated useful traits and discarded the rest, but civilized towns were treated much differently. The legion let them govern themselves so long as they paid taxes and obeyed Kaiser's whim. Many in Arizona and New Mexico found legion rule to be preferable to the petty despots before Kaiser's arrival and a Pax Romana settled over the wastes. Clean water, electricity, and a government that brooked no meaningful dissent. These are the hallmarks of legion civilization. The two exceptions are the fierce Navajo, whose sophistication rivaled the NCR and whose skinwalkers frightened the Frumentari themselves, and the two sons, whose priests pay tribute for autonomy. Justice created a peaceful land, stability and war support. Kaiser's two faces have left their mark, stability, war support, and recovery rate, but this will worse Kaiser's health. The tribals have a new god, recovery rate. Ooh. Well, I'm thinking we can probably always get more war support and stability. Maybe? Maybe we can, maybe we won't. I like the recovery rate, so the tribals have a new god. The Malpais Legate. Joshua Graham, the Malpais Legate, was the co-founder of the Legion and Kaiser's greatest servant. A shrewd, cunning general, an early act cemented his, legion, his legend across the Legion, and from the basis of his military prowess. I will say here, as you can tell from the video, this video is going to be a little longer than my first video in my campaigns, just because we went through the Caps tutorial. So, I'm making this video just a little bit longer, as you can tell. Ooh, 19. Here, no. Malpais, look at actually let's go back here. Send trade route. No, 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 no. Two sons gives you more money. Yeah, unless there's something else here. Nope. 19. Send the oh, we need more political power. We're, we're getting closer. So the Malpais look at. Joshua Graham, the Malpais look at, never saw a contradiction between his Mormon faith and his commitment to the Legion. Graham saw the Legion as a scourge for the corruption and sins of the wasteland, just as Joshua harried the old Canaanites, so he would harry the wickedness and greed he saw. Graham was disgusted by the perceived corruption of his people, and some whispered, plan to lead the Legion home to cleanse his nation. Others thought he abandoned his faith entirely, devoted to conquest and power, and Graham himself? Only Kaiser knew his goals. He scourged Kaiser's enemies like the Amal... Amalekites. Amalekites. Spawned three locked template siege divisions. He desecrated two sons' templates to mock idolatry. I kinda like that one. He and Kaiser sought justice together in their way. The Maw Pius Legate will fight for Kaiser and risk his own life if need be. The Legate's accomplishments disturbed Kaiser himself. Although you will get two motorized battalions and two from entire battalions, Kaiser's concerns will worsen himself. No, we're good for now. We're good. Mm hmm. Risk his own life. He desecrated two sons. I kind of want to do this one. I, I'm kind of interested in cherry divisions. Maybe we'll try that. Maybe we'll actually use them. Cool. Kaiser, son of Mars. Kaiser's will is law. He is a god amongst men, the son of God of War Mars. All in his legion served, lived to serve him, and the blade served his master. He is a teacher and master of the tribes under him, and in his conquest taught them many lessons. Good. And we will come back to this once we have 40 political power. We have two chariot divisions, and actually I'm just going to throw them under special forces. That'll be very cool. Let's exploit these guys, or by other means, Maho nations. I, you know what? I want to launch a slave raid. I do. Ooh, where's Poston? Is this Poston? The Poston's down here. We shall do an enemy state in Gila. 
With Lucius, multiply select it. Ooh. I'm not really sure who's... Ooh. Well, let's use you, Aurelius. Start a border war. Your six divisions are moving down there. Maybe I should have had my divisions down there first. Oh, well. It's my first one. I'm going to claim ignorance. Oh, that's not good. Zero out of 100. Oh, they're actually already over there. Go, guys, go. Win, win, win. <laughs> Maybe I should have been a little bit more prepared for this. That's okay. Let's go and start training a little bit more. Oh, we got a guy here. Puppet Ledger. Cool. 17. Thank you. Hey, get more money. Hey, at least we're winning. And we have an operative. Volpus Inculta. Ooh, Smooth Talker. Frumentaris. Frumentarius. Gecko Pet. Ooh. Volpus Inculta. Ninja. I I've got to go with that one. I've got to go with him. Oh, if we can win the border war, I would love it. Aurelius is doing a great job, though, right now. Come on, you guys got this. Against these, well, raiders, the Tohono Nation. Come on, come on. Yeah, I, th I think we'll win. I think we'll be pretty good here. I hope so. Subdivise Navajo, subdivise two sons. Exploit Navajo and two sons. Ruthless draws. We're pretty good right now. A successful slave raid. We've returned yet with more slaves for our empire. Was well, this not a grand old time? It was fun and profitable. We got almost 0.7 thousand slaves. I'll be honest, it's never enough. Never enough to quench our thirst. Good enough. Are you guys? Oh, my pot's like it's right there. Oh, he's a field marshal. Oh, that's kind of cool. Ah, some outsiders claim the Legion disdains advanced technology, but this is a half truth. The Legion builds power plants, complex fortifications, and equips its elite soldiers with anti-material rifles, marksman carbines, and ballistic fists. Technology to the Legion is a, sign, is a fine servant, but a poor master. The cult of Vulcan handles all technology for the Legion and ensures that technology exists to serve man, not man to serve technology. A mix of priests and engineers, the cult of Vulcan, supervise the slaves that mine coal, forge weapons, and craft ammunition. They are loyal to Kaisal, but lately... Some have been looking in non-technical pre-war books and asking questions. And of course, there are some elder slaves who served in the Brotherhood's Arizona Detachment who are spared only for what they know. They build chariots for a god. Ooh, I kind of like the APCs. Actually, can we get up to APCs? Because if we go here... We've got the tech levels. Infantry support, special forces, power... We can't use power armor, which is fine. Vehicles. We can get civilized vehicles. That's kind of cool. No robotics, obviously. Industry is not bad. Naval vessels are pretty basic. Aircraft is pretty basic, which is fine, actually. Electronics, construction. So we, I like that they divide this up way more. It gives you a little bit more. It gives me a little more flavor, I guess we'll say. The boat chariots for a gub. Kaisal serves as a high priest, which hurts our health, but mm. the Brotherhood's survivors have a role. I like this one. I, I think we'll probably use APCs because that looks really, really good. But now we have options. We can do the Rubicon, Sonora et Chihuahua. The 87th Tribe. Ooh, that's a lot of political power. I like that a lot. Using the Waste, or uniting the Waste. Looks pretty good. The State of the Legion. Now we get the Vexillarius. The, our son of a bitch. Huh. Wrestling the Cowboys. For Cowboy Country? Oh, I want to go to war now. I want to go to war like yesterday. Look at that. I like that flag. I'll start with these guys. Eh, a couple manpower. Oh, if we... I've got to go to war now. They have a generic focus tree. Which might be better if we wait to take them out, but so they can build up more factories, but... Wait, hold on. Wait, did that just... That focus say, I like them young? Oh, oh, never mind. They're just recruiting them young. They don't like them young. Well, maybe they do, but whatever. I want to go to war as fast as possible. Actually, if I go down this way, though, we get... Look at this. Rebirth of the triplex aces. Oh, my goodness. As well as rebirth of the Principes Doctrine. You know what? Let me know. Should we go with the rebirth of the Principes Doctrine? Or the rebirth of the triplex axes. Which I should show you down here, which should influence your division your decision. The Forge of Flagstaff. So if you go down the axes, the triplex, you get Forge of Flagstaff, as well as the Unending Legions, which looks okay. Or the Rebirth of the Principes Doctrine, which looks pretty awesome. The plan for Flagstaff, which you get do get more building slots. Or ever evolving, which you get more planning speed and 50% division organization. Let me know in the comments below. But son of a bitch, I like that one. Wrestling cowboys, I want to go to war as fast as possible. El Generalissimo, like so many other profligates, would sell his own mother for a deal, but we can't find her. But, but perhaps he'll buy some slaves. Yes, I want, I want war. War, more war, infinite war. Only when we're ready, though. Send slaves to the workshops. Gloria, 
Exorcitos. Kaiser is a glue that holds the Legion together, but he is backed by the leaders, the greatest leaders of the Wasteland. Cunning Vulpus, the Bloody Luggage, Pragmatic Aurelius, the Beast of the East, Lanius, all serve as his command, and of course there is loyal, dutiful Lucius. All of them strive for Kaiser's favor and will try to earn glory, if, and if anything should happen to the god, well, that glory may come in handy. Glory is tracked as a decision category, and the leaders of the Legion may earn glory through great deeds in service of the Legion. Are they true to Kaiser? Which my pious lug it? Uh, I'm not really sure. You know what? Here's another question, because I'm I'm open. I'm completely open to whatever you guys think. For the glory of Rome, who should earn the most glory? What do you think? The Malpius Luggett, Centurion Aurelius, Praetorian Lucius, or Frumentaris Vulpus? Let me know in the comments below, because I'm totally open at the time of this recording to whichever, whichever general you think should get the most glory out of our conquests, our fights, and Kaiser's favor. As you can tell, I really, I really like Kaiser's Legion. Lanny's cohort declared one of the Blue Rose Society. Cool. And I, my apologies, we're already 26 minutes into this video, pretty much, and it's only March 2nd. So, but as you can see, this video is a little bit longer, like I said, than my normal videos, just because. Why not? I spent a lot of time with the, the tutorial, so might as well enjoy it for what it is, right? Enjoy it as much as we can. Mm, combat language, cool. And Ohm's Law. Let's go ahead and... Ooh, I love slave collars. Oh, that just... I, I don't know. Slaves. It just makes me happy. What is this, though? What is Tribal Heritage? What is... Tribal Tech Access Tech. Caps Income. Caps Expenses. Passive Caps Income. Ooh. Local Innovation. Tribal Pride. That looks really cool. Land Auction. We gotta definitely do that. Specialized Auction. Yeah, we definitely have to do that. We've got a lot of things to do. Scrap Motorcycles. I did say I might want to try to get APC, so we'll get there eventually. Robotics, we can't do it all. Totally fine. I want planes. Gliders. Because now we have gliders. But at the same time, we can get recon gliders. Which is interesting. But here's something else. We have barrage ba balance. I'm thinking balloons, but maybe balance. Which look okay. You know, they're the way to get biplane fighters, which we might not be able to get to. Air superiority is 0.25, which is not great. You guys have air superiority of 0.5, so. But we have bomb gliders, and I think this is a little bit of a glitch. Look at that ground attack. 75 ground attack. Now, this might just be glitched. But if you go from gliders, which have two ground attack, to 75, please, if the devs are watching, don't change this. <laughs> is, that, is that real? Payload gliders? Do they drop bombs, or do they, they just crash into the ground? Because that looks awesome. 75? God dang. Because if you look at, like, nuclear-powered attack planes, they have only 36. That is literally, like, less than half of the bomb gliders, which, hey, awesome. You know what? We're going to go work as needed because I want to get as much output as possible. we got to get more infantry equipment. Uh, let's see, a couple other things. Our son of a bitch. Oh, visit to the general store. Generalissimo Viala. As among the canniest of Mexico's rulers, and he has profited from a mighty arms supply, but now he's looking for new markets, and is willing to cut a deal to work with us. By trading slaves for guns, pay for the Legion's expansion with the fruit of conquest, El Generalissimo has long sold guns through his merchants across western Mexico. Perhaps we can encourage some trade. And a visit from El Generalissimo. Kaiser. The Generalissimo has proposed an arms deal. This could be very useful to us, and there's honestly no downside to this arrangement. They hope that this will turn into an alliance against the luchadors who threaten Generalissimo Viala. And we could use this as a springboard to invade Mexico. Ooh, look at this. Wish you were here. Ave. You can buy guns. I want conquest. I'm sorry. But not really. Generous honor. Profitable trade. The Frumentarius investigation. Let's get this one. I like factories. And infrastructure. The general may haggle for a deal, but we, he will always stick to it. And we would certainly profit from his arms shipment. That's not enough slaves. Oh, one thing I will say. I'm not sure why this is down here. I kind of understand why you can always see it. And I know the State Chester tool mod is always kind of like over here. But if you could like move this over like to the right side or the left side of the State Chester tool mod. Just so we can see it at all times. Because when you open up the decisions, it just, I don't know. It's You can't see it. Which is kind of okay. Could be better. Uh, Phoenix Rises. Phoenix was one of the Legion's first major conquests, and to some, it marked the date the Legion turned from a band of tribes into an empire. Before the Legion's conquest, Phoenix had been home to settlers who used the Sila and Gila rivers to irrigate cotton fields and traded textiles through the southwest. Although many of the town's residents had prospered once the Legion united Arizona and opened up new markets, some of the Phoenix's rich member remember when they were masters of the fate. Could not Phoenix emulate? They whisper the Republic of the Rio Grande. Could they not reform a city-state of their own? Fools that they are, they do not know that the Frumentari are aware of their plans. Kaiser will find this interesting. 
Rebels, you say? I want to slave slaves to the workshop, though. And if you, you can click on all different types of these places eventually, so we can build more stuff in different places. Flagstaff, so it's really cool. That's actually really, really awesome. Subsidize. Oh, my pies. He falls ill. Well, get better soon. Business favor. Requesting loan. Lower tariffs. Bolster. Bloster production. Scavenging mission. Very cool. Owner is at war with the Kazakh Legion. Not completed. The bridge across the divide. Cool. And also, we have stuff here. Oh, we have petty criminal conscripts. Outsider volunteers. It probably make, doesn't make sense for go to outsider battalion, but we might need to do that. I'm not really sure. Like I said, I've not played as a Legion since I last played as them on this channel, so it's been a while. Resistance growth is not bad. Pr Praetorian Prefect. So if you want to go, I'm pretty sure we can still go down the Brotherhood of Mars route, which actually I think I played once. I think when I played as a Legion, I did go down that path, so I think we'll not go down that way, but 25% for more infantry is not bad. Discouraged traders, academic advisors. Uh, it's not bad. That stuff is okay. Mother Shaman. Oh, do we have... We do not have the twin mothers under us. Which is kind of disappointing, but we'll get her eventually, maybe. Fox is cunning. That does not look bad, either. That looks pretty good. Oh, cultural policies. Oh, yeah. I want to go slavery to the waste. I want to exploit my slaves. Just straight up exploit them. So, actually, if we come down here, we have something interesting. It told Chinsky's engineering more construction speed. But I think the way to go... Ooh, silversmiths. Not bad, too. Cap's income, plus 5%. We're going to come over here. West End Economy, go well-equipped army. Oh, actually... More than 60% world tension. No, that's going to that take too long. Just go well equipped army. And we have reference manuals. Tribal Hastati. Tribal cohorts. Recruited auxiliary. Conscripted principes. And Nova Triorii. Wait, Triorii. Triar, triari. Triari. My bad. Sorry, I played Rome Total War and I thought that's it. I thought that is how they pronounce it. I love Rome Total War. Number one. That was such a fun game. That was my first Total War game ever. Oh, man. I got to go back to that game someday. But war by other means, it's choking on the bear is choking, going to choke on his conquest, especially if we poison his food. Our agents are ready and willing to harass the NCR throughout the Mojave and in Ashton and Hopeville. This will give us a valuable advantage in our war to come. Oh yeah, rip Hopeville and Ashton. Oh, the Ouroboros. Genta City aligned with Gloria. General Lissimo Viala has burned ties with the Legion, aligning with the prolificates of the Republic of the Rio Grande. We'll keep this in mind and we'll see them crucified outside their villa. Yep, degenerates like him belong on a cross. I mean, that's fine. I, mean, I don't really care, I'll be honest. A profitable trade under the eyes of the Legionnaires. A new shipment of Braceros has arrived in Genta City. They'll be welcomed and treated humanely so long as they obey, and some of the fortunate may even serve in Generalismo's Viala's villa. Gracias, Kaiser. And let's see. Republic of the Rio again. I don't care, I just want to take them over. I, I want war, so. Ooh, Aurelius gains glory. Our amigos in the north? Well, we do get a thing against cowboy country, so. Oh, oh, that's the renters. Cowboy country, cowboy country. Oh, right here. Oops. I sent you guys in the wrong place. I want full conquest. Uh, we might as well do this since we do want to go to war. So, one of the ways to promote our ties to Genta del Sol is to teach him the ways of the Legion. Perhaps Generalissimo Viala has some enemies he wishes to nail to a cross? Yes? Good. We can do two more there. Oh, we need some more support equipment. That'd be fine. Oh, yeah, get them slave collars. We're going to need quite a few of that. Actually, do three. Go down there and then do that. There you go. Olympus drive was annexed. That is fine. Do we have any more generals yet? No, let's grab one more. Centurion Phoenix. Dousing the Phoenix. Oh, boy. Oh, God. This Pollux guy is not very good. Oh. There you go. Kaiser and his council agreed to the, agreed the rebels of the Phoenix must be crushed, lest they jeopardize the legion's cotton, citrus, and copper, but they disagree, disagree on how to handle it. Lucius' proposal is the simplest. Why not just simply kill some ringleaders, confiscate their property, then lower taxes for Phoenix's poor? It'll remind them that the great Kaiser is harsh but just. Some whisper that it is a sign of Lucius, sign Lucius grows, grows soft, but Kaiser knows that a chariot is best with engines, fear, and love. Volpus's plan is to lure the rebel leadership to a meeting with agents who will pretend to work with the desert rangers, and then crucify them along the banks of the Gila River. But a Aurelius has the most devious, and some would say harshest plan of all. Aurelius proposes to arm the rebels with faulty munitions, and encourage them to revolt. The rebels won't know this until it is too late, and will be ripe for the taking. Once Phoenix is reconquered, the Legion can break the city once and for all. Or Kaiser can always listen to Malpaius Legate, who proposes just crucifying one in every 100 citizens, as a Phoenix, as an example. Lucius has always served us well. What a cunning plot. Deal with these rebels. The Frumentari are perfect for this. Go and exterminate those sinful Phoenicians! Oh my goodness, you know what? I love every single one of these options. Uh, but it seems like if we go down this path, 
it'll give whoever recommended their plan more glory. And I want to leave it up to you guys in this campaign to tell me which or which way we should go. So, should we go Lucius? What a cunning plot with probably Vulpus, the Frumentari, of course. Or go on and exterminate those sinful Phoenicians. I'll let you guys decide that. But I also want to know your opinion. Old World Blues 3.0 is out. There's many new nations, such as the Sleepers, which have replaced the Grand Tribes. We have the Salix Sil Nation up here, which took up our way, took some land from Bellingham, as well as the Camlo people. Uh, the Western Brotherhood has gotten more territory and exchanged some with the Shi, as well as other nations in Texas, which we completely ignored, and Louisiana, but unfortunately, at the time of this recording, Louisiana has no unique focus trees, because I don't know why, but hopefully someday we will have a robotic who we long. But that's just me. So my question to you is this, and probably the most important one out of this entire uh, episode. Which nation are you most forward to looking for? forward to or seeing someone play as in Old World Blues because we even have the Hangdogs here which do have a unique focus tree as well which I have played as a Hangdogs only with a generic focus tree before but let me know in the comments because I really want to know right now who do you think is would you like to see on this channel more soon or quicker because I'm going to play as all these nations but which nation do you think would be the most interesting to see regardless thank you very much for watching I know I asked you guys a lot of questions but I want to know your thoughts and input regardless like I said earlier, thanks for watching this episode. Consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, in which we shall choose who shall gain Kaiser's favor and glory. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.